Welcome to Just the Two of Us Homestead. We are Colleen and Frank, and we live in the perfect size homestead just for us in southwestern Quebec. Gardening, growing food, and preserving is one of our passions. And our barn animals, we love them so much, they're just like pets. And we're so fortunate to be able to live our lives as we do each and every day is a blessing. Hi, everybody. Today, I'm finally going to get around to up potting or potting up my brassicas. Some are well overdue. I've been putting it off and putting it off because I haven't been feeling well. What else is new? And I wanted to show you how I do it because I have a secret little tip that I do that I think does help in the potting up process. And I'm going to show you in a second close up, but I'm going to have some of them aren't quite ready because remember I did that one seed trick. I was trying to do only one seed per cell. Well, I'm not doing that anymore. I did it with my peppers as well. And the germination isn't good. I went back and all the ones that didn't germinate, I put in more seeds. So the ones that did germinate originally are much, much bigger than the ones I just put in like, I don't know, 10 days ago or whatever. So I'm only going to take out the ones that are big. They have three or four true leaves and they're even getting like a bit leggy. I have a fan going. I'll show you later how the plant setup is going. So I'm just going to show you close up what they look like and then we'll start potting them up with my glasses all right so obviously you can see the ones here that were planted first and then the ones that I did go back and put in a and reseeded a second time you can tell I put in more than one seed and now I have multiple in those but I'd rather have more than less but they're really looking they're really looking good and I didn't water them today or since yesterday because I knew I was going to do this. So let's get started. And in case you're wondering what's behind me, we just moved the chicks into this playpen. That's what we use for the chicks. And we just put them in there yesterday. And we're going to move them today into a spare bedroom that we never use. So... They will be moved later. I don't like having them in the kitchen. We kept their tiny little bin in here just so we could watch them. But just for today, they're here, and I'll show you them in a second, too. You can't believe, or I guess some of you could if you raise chicks, how quickly they grow. It amazes me. They already have long wings and everything. So what I'm going to do is I've already filled most of this with just regular potting soil. No more seed starting just potting soil. And I do nothing, nothing different at this point than anybody else. It's what I do after I've potted them up. That's a bit different, I think. I don't, I've never seen anyone else do it. So I don't want to fill them too much because I'd rather, because I still have to backfill a bit. And I want there to be, I want them to get into the hole pretty deep. All right, let's, this early Jersey cabbage seemed to do really well, so I'm going to start with that. Um, I guess I'll start over here. Get this out of the way. And I'll, I'll bring you in closer, because otherwise you're just looking half at me, and that's not fun. So I have this little handy shovel dibble thing. So I'll just put this here so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll move it. I just go straight down. I may switch to a, a spoon after. I'll see how easily they come out. He's already got some good roots on him. So I'm going to stick him in there. And backfill him with dirt soil. I always say dirt. 
He already has three true leaves on him. I'll make a hole for the next guy. Look at his roots too. Pretty good. They'd obviously, if I had watered them yesterday, they would have held together a bit better today, but it's hard. I find it harder to transplant when they're all wet. So, and I don't want them super wet because I'm going to give them a good soaking after I do all this. Okay. Oh, this early jersey really performed well. I don't know. If, I don't like that one anymore. I'm going to use a spoon. I don't know if I got it from Baker Creek or am I gardener, so I have to look it up. So I did the, like I said earlier, I think, I did the one seed thing on my peppers as well. I didn't film that with you guys, but I did my peppers and... I'd say I only had maybe a 75% germination, which for me is not good. I rarely, when I seed, I rarely ever have MD cells. So I was very disappointed in that. So some of those, and I didn't receive them in the same hole because now those guys are already big and tall. Or not that big, but so I had to start them in a new tray to put them with the humidity dome and everything. And I put two seeds per cell again. Here's a bit of a different view. So, um, this snowball, what other cabbage here? I have this giant one. I guess I'll keep the cabbages together. This giant cat to something. I won't even begin to pronounce it. So I'll put those here. See all this? It would show up better if the dark the earth was so, uh, wet, but they do have nice roots. And of course, they're going to look a bit wilty today with being played with and that. They're going to be mad at me for about 24 hours. And I'm planting them right below their, their baby leaves. Okay, make a label for them. Okay, now what? Let's do some broccoli. <clears throat> the Green Magic. It's a broccoli that grows great, gives big heads. Then once you harvest the big heads, gives, gives off tons of offshoots. I haven't had any problem ever with it bolting. Like, look. That's pretty good. So I'm going to finish filling up this tray. I may have to get out another one. I guess I will. And then I'm going to show you the thing that I use to help with the up potting is in my watering. So I'll finish filling these guys because I'm sure you've all seen this a million times. 
There's nothing special to it. Everybody has their own little way, but this is just how I do it. So when it's full and I'm going to water them, oh, I think I just broke his leaf. We'll come back. Okay, before I move on to transplanting more, I want to water these guys in before they get droopier and more mad at me. So I'm going to put them in here. Only for today, I'm watering from the top. After today, I'll water them from the bottom. But what I'm going to do, and I don't think it... It's not really not recommended, but you have to be also be careful. But I do this every year and it's worked for me. And I think, sorry, I think it really helps. I know you can buy a lot of those expensive mycorrhizal powders and all those things. When you go to transplant, you dip the roots in to help stimulate the root growth and all that. Well, whew, that stinks. What I do is take fish emulsion. This is from last summer, it's all faded, but it's still good. And normally when you use fish emulsion, you put two tablespoons per gallon of water. Well, that's way, way too much for these seedlings. You don't use fish emulsion or any type of real fertilizer on seedlings. But what I do is I literally take maybe half a teaspoon and I'm going to fill it in this gallon jug and I'm going to water all the ones I've transplanted. I'll never use it on ones I've just planted, only on the ones I just did. So I'm just going to take my capful. Maybe I don't even know if you can see me. I'm blinded by the light in front of you or behind you. So I'm literally taking maybe half a teaspoon and pouring it in this jug. And the reason I'm using these jugs, this isn't bought water. We just reuse these jugs from year to year. I can't use my tap water to water our plants. We have a very sophisticated uh, water treatment system or filtration system for our well water. And we it goes through a, like a salt thing because we have very hard water. But our outdoor taps aren't connected to that. They our outdoor water we use for the animals and for the garden, they direct, come directly from the well. So we just keep filling these jugs and bring the water in from the well. So I'm just going to, oh, I wanted to shake him up a bit. So I'm just going to shake that fish emulsion in. To dilute it right to the top with more water. So I don't even think this costs me two pennies. And it'll give the plants that were just transplanted just a touch of nitrogen to get going. And I probably won't use this whole thing today. Hold on, let me get my tape. I'm going to write on this jug so I don't, so that I don't water my little seedlings with it. I'm going to put a uh, fish emulsion. So 
So from now on, I'll be using this jug for fish emulsion. And just regular water when I plant seeds, when the seedlings are still very tiny. So that's what I do. But you have to be careful because you don't want to use a lot, just a smidgen. I'm forgetting a lot of things. So then I'll just take my, this is where I always spill. Oh, I didn't. I did. See, because they're looking pretty sad right now. And yes, water would perk them up too. But this is going to give them just a little boost. Also, a couple of these had were like the second plant in the cell. And they didn't have a really good root thing. So I'm hoping this helps too. And I use fish emulsion all the time on house plants, outside, everything. I swear by it. And if I can just put a wee bit in here to really help the shock of them being transplanted and to give them a boost to keep growing. There, I have to put a little bit of soil and a few others, but I think we're good. Yeah, and it's going to stink. Yeah, so it's not a secret tip per se. It's just a tip that I use and maybe could help you. It's so inexpensive compared to buying all those special mycorrhizal powders and all that. And it really does work. You just have to be careful to do it in small amounts. So hopefully this helps somebody, especially if you're just starting out with your seed starting and potting up. To me, when I started doing it, the scariest part was when I did do the, the first potting up pro process because then they look so sad for a while, and but eventually they perk up. So if this helps you, I'm happy. I unplugged their heat lamp so you could see them better, but these guys have gotten so big. They're a week and two days old. I'll take one or two out so you can see because this isn't really a good view, but look at those wings. Look how big they've got. Look at those wings. Literally a week ago, they didn't have all that. They're like little birds now. I keep telling them to stop growing, but oh, it just amazes me. They're so cute. Hmm? Are you going to stop growing? Are you going to stop growing? Yes? Frank's already training them to go on his finger like a parrot. This is Nikki. She's part silky, hopefully more silky than whatever her father is. But they go on his finger and then soon they'll work the way their way up his arm. Hey, Nikki. <laughs> She's very quiet. Okay, well, the plant setup is quite a mess right now. I really have to come in here and play plant Jenga soon because it's getting a little crazy. I still have another shelf to put up. And instead of moving, like, the lights up and down, I just put boxes to raise the, the plants. And I wanted to show you guys, I've never seen this before. 
Like, I'm over the moon, over the moon happy that I'm getting sweet potato slips. But look, some are growing in the water. I can't believe this. I guess it's okay. I don't know, since this is the first time I've ever in my life grown sweet potato slips. So here are the peppers that germinated. This is yarrow. And then down here is just all the brassicas I just did. Here I'm doing some ranunculus. Here I have rosemary. And in here is my second round of peppers that don't seem to be German. Oh yeah, I guess they're starting to germinate. And what do I have here? Napa cabbage, Chinese cabbage. Here I have basil and dill. This is all celery. And then here I planted some Brussels sprouts but the seed was like two years old, so I thought, oh, I better put a few in each thing, in each little cell, in case they don't germinate. Well, I think I put more than a few because look how many are in each one. So that has to be thinned out. So tomorrow, I guess I will fix up this area and organize it better because once I start with the tomatoes there'll be no room for anything else. So I'm going to continue on potting up. Um, there's probably about 15 more to go on this tray and I'll have to wait until the, the rest of the second seeding I did catches up but that's okay. That's probably all I can do today. I think the tomatoes are going to have to wait for tomorrow. And that's okay too. Thank you for hanging in there with me. I know the videos aren't consistent. They're few and far between. And I'm just struggling with a lot of health issues right now and pain. I miss you guys. I miss interacting with you. And I'm really hoping with the gardening season and all this, it helps to motivate me and kick me to get going again. So fingers crossed that that's what it does. So until we're together again, take care.